We've been discussing sampling from an ideal perspective, that is where we have a band-limited signal. We saw that the sampling theorem said that if we sample the signal at a rate that corresponds to twice the highest frequency in the signal, that we can do perfect reconstruction. Now in practice, what happens is that many signals are not perfectly band-limited. In other words, they have energy at higher and higher frequencies. And even for signals that are exactly band limited to some frequency, there's usually noise present, and no the noise may have a spectrum that goes way up uh, farther than the signal of interest. So if we don't accommodate the take this into account, the noise can alias back down into the signal band, and that would be a, a bad thing to have happen. So what we typically do is we're going to insert a low pass filter which is called an anti-aliasing filter, before we actually sample the signal. That filter has to be an analog filter because we haven't sampled the signal yet. So we get some, a diagram that looks something like this. We have our original signal, X of T, and then we're going to pass that through an anti-aliasing filter, which has frequency response HA of omega. We use a subscript A to denote anti-aliasing. That gives us an analog signal X A of T, which now should be band limited by virtue of use of this filter so that we can sample it at intervals of NT where T is chosen based on not the bandwidth of the original signal X of T, but the effective bandwidth of our anti-aliasing filter H A of omega. And this will then will give us our sampled signal X of N. So let's look at a little example illustration of this, and I've drawn here a signal X of omega, which has a noise in associated with it, and I've drawn the special case where the signal lies alone between frequencies minus W and W, and then above W, we've got noise. It could be noise in the electronics that's sensing the signal or an amplifier or something like that, but there's higher frequency noise that's being generated. And while we could choose the use the sampling theorem and say, well, we're going to choose uh, our sampling frequency based on twice the highest frequency here on 2W, but then what's going to happen is all this noise is going to alias down into the signal and it's going to go all mixed up and we're, we're actually going to make things worse this way. So we use a analog filter HA of omega and I've drawn one here that is somewhat realistic in that it doesn't go exactly to zero at W. Okay, There's a transition band where the filter goes from its pass band to its stop band and I'm going to assume here that the stop band starts at frequency B and so in between W and B is sort of this transition region. So what I'm going to have at the output of this filter, we called XA. So XA of omega is equal to X of omega times HA of omega. And we can sketch that. So what we have is that the passband of the anti-aliasing filter, HA, is going to pass the signal that lies between minus W and W. So there's no real distortion there. And then the noise gets attenuated by the transition band until it finally gets wiped out by the stop band. So we have this interval here of noise that's residual. Now if I directly apply the sampling theorem to this particular input signal, X A of T, we see that the highest frequency present is B. So I would require my sampling frequency omega S, which of course is 2 pi over T, would have to be greater than 2b. That's what the sampling theorem would say. And this would guarantee no aliasing at all. However, we can actually sample a little bit lower if we are not concerned about the noise aliasing onto itself. What we don't want is the noise to alias onto the signal. But if the noise aliases back into this band, it could be oftentimes that the subsequent digital processing is going to get rid of this anyway. So we can reduce our requirements slightly, and the condition now is that the replicate, let's say the k equals 1 replicate on the downside, doesn't alias below w. So the lower end, uh, remember this spectrum when we do our, in 
the frequency domain, we have the replicate shifted at multiples of omega s. So this is going to shift to omega s, and the lower end is going to be omega s minus b. So we require that omega s minus b not alias into the signal, in other words, be greater than w, or omega s would have to exceed b plus w. And if our transition band in the filter, that is w, the distance from w to b, is fairly large, this actually can be uh, a bit of a reduction below the requirement for no aliasing at all, which says that omega s has to exceed twice b.